as we kind of wrap up here, um, we're going to do one of our favorite segments, which is burst my beta cells. Um, so what has been bursting your beta cells or grinding your gears? Mine? Yeah, yeah. you. Oh. <laughs> Are we going to, do you guys want me to talk about health or do you guys want me to talk about dogs? You can talk about whatever, whatever, especially since you're not a diabetic, you can, you can, you got, you got more beta cells than all of us. So they can actually <laughs> burst. So it's a unique situation here where we're figuratively oh. bursting. <laughs> you want to go down a rant or should we keep it to the podcast? Whatever you're feeling. Well, yeah, let's go. So, so my wife. <laughs> I love it already. This will be good. <laughs> I hope to God she can't hear me. I'm in the basement because the baby's still <laughs> away. Um, and so we have a 21 month old, a nine month old, and an 11 year old. Oh, wow. Busy house. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The Irish twins. Uh, I always wanted them, I got them. Be careful nice. what you wish for. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. So she drives a very, it's used, but she drives a very nice car. She drove a very nice car. She drove a, a Tahoe um, LTZ. That we bought, you know, we bought it used, but, you know, Tahoes, you can get them with 50,000 miles on them and they're still in really nice shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she was driving a lot for hockey before the babies were born. So she bought a Jaguar E Pace. Her first car she bought on her own. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. She traded in the Tahoe <laughs> for the Jaguar E Pace. Was and it about the same caliber. Oh. <laughs> the Tahoe and the Jaguar. <laughs> they, uh, price wise, they are actually. Oh, really? But, uh, oh. Yeah. But size wise, they are not. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fast forward to one baby. So we only had, so at that time when she traded in, we had one baby. So before Tahoe, we had no babies, got the Tahoe, had a baby, only having one baby, Jaguar E-Pace, had it for three months, have baby. Two car seats in Jaguar E-Pace, 11-year-old brother, can't put a seatbelt on in the middle seat in the back seat. Dad can't sit in the passenger seat because the baby seat is rear facing and I literally can't fit in the front seat. I have to drive. <laughs> okay. So that's great. So we finally get to a financial situation where we can get rid of it. And we move some things around and, you know, small family who owns small business and she works as a surgical tech. Um, I'm sure you can see where I'm going. We're not, you know, raking it in here. And <laughs> so we get her a Yukon, a used Yukon, and she loves it. And I'm like, yes, finally. All Both babies in captain chairs. The 11-year-old can crawl through with no problem, get to the back seat. His hockey bag and a stroller fit, which if you have a hockey kid out there and you know how big a hockey bag is, plus a stench, yeah. it is nice <laughs> to be able to fit it comfortably yeah. and for him to put it in there himself, which he can with that lift gate. So you yes. hit that lift gate button and he just throws his hockey bag in and gets in. You don't have to get the babies out. So my wife, we're eating lunch together the other day in my mom's restaurant, bar and grill, the office. And she says, <laughs> I said, what? Oh, nothing. She's typing away on her phone. I'm like, who are you gossiping with now? And she's like, oh, not so like, ding. I'm like, what? Facebook. How mad would my husband be if I got a minivan? <laughs> <sighs> now I'm 30. I don't know how old you guys are, but you both look young. And I was a correctional officer and I wanted to be a firefighter. So I have this, even if I'm not, I have this I'm cool vibe. <laughs> Right. Um, you know, I listen to gangster music, uh, real gangster music. I listen to rock and roll. I, in, I used to enjoy myself too much as a young man. And I am pretty much deemed wild in the town that I come from. There's no <laughs> way in hell, sorry to cuss, that I'm driving 
a minivan. <laughs> so within 30 seconds, I post on Facebook and I said, uh, asking for a friend, I'm looking for a divorce attorney. In the town <laughs> of Redbud in Waterloo, we cannot go anywhere without people pulling us aside in either A, thinking I was serious, B, thinking she was serious and sending me pictures of minivans, oh, or wow. C, laughing at me, thinking that I'm silly for want, not wanting a minivan. I'm here to tell you, as a 30-year-old dad, and I will be able to drink in a bar with both my sons and my daughter won't be allowed to leave the house. So she'll just have to, I don't know, learn how to sew. But that's so awful to say. Moms out there, women out there, I am not saying women shouldn't be able to do anything and everything they want. But my daughter, my beautiful little angel, Blaine, she is to be protected in my home and she can become a nun. That's the way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> She's my baby girl. I don't want her to get hurt. <laughs> I, mm. you, that should be a good thing. It shouldn't mm. be a down thing. Um, no, really. She can do it. She'll have a dirt bike just like the boys. But, uh, there you, go. you know, I plan to stay, be a cool dad. So to the minivan dads out there, props to you. But, I don't think dads under the age of 40 should wear white Nikes with white socks or drive minivans. <laughs> I think I could get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think normally if you buy a minivan, it comes with the white Nikes and the white socks. Like that's like an added bonus. That's, that's how you make that purchase. I just... <laughs> You're so frustrated. <laughs> Who? One, we drive five hours to Chicago for hockey tournaments in middle of winter. Like, I get their all-wheel drive. That's great. If you've never drove in Chicago in middle of the winter down a side road that's been plowed in, like, <laughs> the Tahoe still has the tires that we bought on it, which, you know, we bought it used, so it, it came with them 22 inch rims and uh, street tires. Cause I'm sure it came out of St. Louis, but it will soon get 18 inch rims again and all terrain tires. Like this is not, this is a tank mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and the windows are tinted black. So you can't see inside. Um, but, and it might be really loud when I drive by versus my wife uh you get that window shake but let me tell you something i am not window shaking any van windows so <laughs> my work truck doesn't do that and i'm like you're you're not no we are not giving up this yukon for no my cool factor just no <laughs> <laughs> wow no what about you grade oh I will say traveling because I um, I drove down to Arizona this this week to uh, take my first load of stuff because I'm actually moving out there at the end of the month. And um, awesome, so, yeah. So uh, so so we took the first load down there. So we drove 24 hours out there, and it was rough. And luckily, my blood sugar was pretty good throughout the whole thing. So no problems there. It's just, just the pure fact of, um, putting in a marathon of driving. Um, not, not excited about it. Not excited about doing it one more time either. So, mm. so that's kind of been bursting my base. So what about you, Garrett? So, in a in a similar fashion of, of Zach, of just kind of, uh, being a little more random, I suppose. Um, you know, I've had this electricity thing going on in my house for a while where my lights flicker and, and I'm renting right now. And um, come to find out after, you know, how I don't know how many months I've lived here um, that it, it fried with one of my, you know, one of my equipment that I have, uh, like my receiver for my, my stereo system. And um, it was like the, the wiring was all bad. The gr there wasn't a neutral the ground wasn't really like to wet earth or anything like that 
And by the time we called the electric company today, it was fixed within a day. And it just like really made me irritated that out of however many months of like flickering lights and like the fridge going on and off and just all these other inconvenience, first world problems. That was just a single phone call by the actual landowner when they decided to care a little bit more and, uh, and um, got things rocking and rolling, but on, on a more diabetic side of things, uh, um, I'm currently in between transmitters with my CGM uh, without between the Dexcom and I'm using finger sticks and man, even though I've been diabetic for almost 14 years, I still can't get a, a good finger stick every, every time. And I'll waste like 10 finger sticks of, of checking my blood. Cause it's not enough or wrong timing, or I don't wait till it says ready. And while it's still counting down and whatever else. And so that's a minor frustration as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a bummer. I mean, those, are, those aren't cheap. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're expensive. So. Get a, there get we are to that cost thing again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I once um I once had to argue like all of a sudden then my insurance company years ago were, were denying my test strips because I was wanting to get a lot of data and I wanted to like understand my low blood sugars a lot more and my my, my patterns. And somehow in the insurance side of things, I got flipped from a type one to a type two. And they're like, well, type two shouldn't be testing that much. So with the number of sticks you say you have per day and the number you put putting in order, we're, we're denying you. And one, I was ticked because I was, I'm not a type two, but two, who the hell cares if I was type one or type two, if a type two wanted to check their blood sugar to understand their blood sugar more and, and to really dial in their health, why should they be denied that fact? And, you know, and then, so that that's really, like that's almost an older person, my beta cells, because it's it happened a long time ago. And I was just like, there's no reason for you, an insurance company to dictate how much I need to check to understand my blood sugar when you're just trying to cut costs and save money. 